Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let's have a look at the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. So is the ASX going to see a better day after a grim Wednesday? Well, the 19th of May 2021 witnessed Australian indices ending their session in the red with a fall in basic materials and energy stocks. Notably, the ASX 200 declined by 1.95% and the ASX 100 witnessed a fall of 1.89%. The ASX 200 fell by 1.90 to 6,931.70. However, the S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 27.20 points or 0.39% to 6,958.90. That's after setting a new 20-day low. The top performing stocks in this index are EML Payments. Their shares are up 11.79% and Eagles Automotive are up 4.95%. The index itself has lost 0.34% for the last five days, but sits 2.98% below its 52-week high. Eight of 11 sectors are higher today, along with the S&P S6200 index. Information technology is the best performing sector, gaining 1.78% so far and 1.92% for the last five days. On that note, let us quickly glance through some major market movements around the world. Global stock indices fell in the volatile trading session on Wednesday. That's following the release of the minutes from the latest U.S. Federal Reserve meeting that depicted that the U.S. economy is still far from the Fed's goals. At the same time, a few policymakers also thought that if the economy continued to show rapid progress, it would be appropriate to begin discussing a tapering of monetary policy measures in upcoming meetings. U.S. stock markets continued a losing streak on Wednesday as losses across all sectors deepened amid a dwindling risk appetite among investors and a sharp decline of cryptocurrencies. The Dow Jones fell 0.48% to 33,896, while the S&P 500 lost 0.29% to 4,111 .7. The Nasdaq Composite recovered considerably from the day's low, closing almost flat, with a negligible downtick of 0.03% to 13,299 .7. At the same time, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield rose to a three-day high, and the U.S. dollar index also gained. Cryptocurrencies plunged to mark their worst fall this year. That's after China's crackdown. We've reported Chinese regulators have tightened their restrictions on the use of cryptocurrencies by banning financial institutions and payment companies from providing services related to cryptos. These services include cryptocurrency trading, payments, clearing and settlement, pledging services, amongst others. Bitcoin plunged to its lowest level since January at 30,000 at 30, US dollars following China's decision, while rival cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum sank 28% to 2,444 US dollars. Dogecoin crashed as much as 50% to the day's low of 21.5 US cents. However, the cryptocurrencies sharply rebounded from the lower levels, still trading with double-digit losses. Oil prices dropped considerably on Wednesday amid concerns over rising COVID-19 cases in Asia and also inflation. Brent crude oil futures for July delivery traded 0.12% up at $66.71 US cents per barrel. And WTI crude oil futures for July delivery traded at 63 cents sorry, $63.45 US cents per barrel. That was up 0.16% on the 20th of May at 10.21 this morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Prices were also weighted by the concerns that US inflation could prompt Federal Reserve to slow down the economic growth with a hike in interest rates. It is speculated that the federal government might increase the rates to reduce investors' exposure to commodities, cryptocurrencies and stocks. In addition to that, progress in the Iran nuclear deal is expected to add between 1 million to 2 million barrels per day extra into the market that could create a crude oil surplus to squeeze oil prices. 
Now moving on, let's take a look at some news from ASX listed companies now. The healthcare sector will be dominating this Stocks in Action session, along with the consumer sector and also mining. Firstly, New World Resources has reported substantial new high-grade assay results from eight lately concluded drill holes at the Antler Copper Project in Arizona in the U.S. The results indicate additional favorable assays from several holes in the recently discovered South Chute. This remains completely open at depth, and the results indicate thick, high-grade intercepts in the main chute. Assays are pending for 13 other drill holes that were completed. Meanwhile, shares in New World Resources last traded at 10 cents. That was at 10.41 this morning, Australian time. Moving on now to Peppermint Innovation. They've inked a payments facilitator agreement with the operator of Gcash, G-Exchange. Any Filipino Gcash mobile wallet holder shall have the capacity now to pay for goods and services from the Bizmoto platform using their mobile Gcash wallet. A Bizmoto merchant, an agent, or Bizmo Go rider can accept payment directly from a mobile Gcash wallet whilst offering goods or services. Peppermint Innovation stock previously traded at 2.2 cents at 10.41 this morning Australian time. Moving on now, leading media services provider Aspermont reports revenue from continuing operations of around $7.3 million. That's for their first half of their financial year. This shows a decline of 10% on the prior corresponding period, while the gross profit increased by 6% to $4 million. Over the period, their balance sheet has strengthened and has zero debt with a growth of 1,943% in cash at the end of the period. The company looks forward to substantial improvement in all bottom line financial metrics, as well as a shift from conservative to proactive investment approach. Shares in Aspermont stock last traded at 2.4 cents. That was at 10.41 this morning Australian time. Moving on now, Buru Energy has extended the closing date of the share purchase plan to the 4th of June this year to allow additional time for eligible shareholders to participate in the offer. The company remains on track to begin the 2021 exploration drilling program in mid-June. That's as the first rig loads are due to be picked up in the coming weeks and site works are near completion. That's at the Karajong Wan location in Queensland. The company anticipates the spud of the Karajong Wan well in mid-June and the Raphael Wan well shall spud in late July or early August, it's hoped. Shares in Burrow Energy traded at 15.5 cents at 10.41 this morning Australian time. Meanwhile, Ampol has announced its future energy and decarbonisation strategy, highlighting a series of new commitments and initiatives. By 2025, company operations are to use 40% equivalent net renewables, along with a 25% reduction in operational emissions on an absolute basis from 2021 levels for convenience retail and a 5% reduction in operational emissions intensity from 2021 levels for fuels and infrastructure. By 2030, operations are set to use 50% equivalent net renewables with a 50% reduction in operational emissions on an absolute basis from 2021 levels for convenience retail and also a 10% reduction in operational emissions intensity from 2021 levels for fuels and infrastructure. So looking forward to by 2040 net zero emissions from operations on an absolute basis should see these results. A maximum of $100 million spend on the future energy projects is set to take place by 2025. The development of future energy solutions for customers with a focus on energy, hydrogen, gas, biofuels and carbon mitigation and also three new industry collaborations, which includes one with electrical vehicle company Tesla. Meanwhile, shares in Ampol stock traded last at $27.79 per share. That was at 10.41 this morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Stay tuned with Kalkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, economy, diverse themes and sectors. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.